Hey guys, it's Angie Atkinson and today at QueenBeing.com we're going to talk about hoovering, what it is, and how you can deal with it if it happens to you. Let's get started. Okay, so you know how it's always hard to deal with a narcissist. And that's true whether you're still in the toxic relationship with them or if you've recently left one. But due to a narcissist's behaviors and patterns, there are times when we find ourselves feeling weak, almost powerless to resist their charms, even when we know better. One of those times, of course, is during the narcissistic hoovering phase, and that's why we're talking about hoovering and how you can deal with it. So what is hoovering anyway? Well, the hoovering technique is one that was named after a famous vacuum cleaner company. Y'all know which one I'm talking about, right? And it's one of the many co uh, common manipulation tactics that is employed by abusive toxic narcissists. It's when the narcissist sort of sucks his victim back into the relationship or some version of it. And it often begins innocently enough, right? So kind of subtly. And it always happens with one target in mind, and that is, of course, to regain control of the narcissistic supply. That's you, my friend. Yeah, so I'm going to provide you with kind of a simple and funny example of hoovering that will kind of give you an idea of what it really looks like and maybe help you to kind of look at it in your own life, okay? So this is Charlie Brown. Okay, how Charlie Brown and, and, and Lucy, you know Lucy, right? How This is how they can demonstrate this kind of um, technique or tactic. So let's just do it. Remember in the Charlie Brown cartoon and the Peanuts cartoons when Lucy would always hold the the ball, the football for Charlie Brown and every time she would he would try to kick it, she'd pull it away and he'd fall right on his head. And when he'd fall she'd smile like there was no tomorrow. Actually enjoying his pain, right? Well, Charlie Brown of course would do what any other kid would and that's he'd stop trusting her to hold the ball. But inevitably Lucy would promise each time that this time she would really let him kick the ball and inevitably he'd fall for it and also inevitably the woman the girl would pull it away at the last second and then she'd bust out that big toothy smile again just as he fell one more time yeah hoovering that's it it usually begins after the devalue and discard phases when the silent treatment has stopped giving the narcissist pleasure and when he's ready for more, he or she is ready for more of that supply that you've been feeding them for all these months or years. Or it'll start after you've left your narcissist and he or she fears you won't return. The idea is that the narcissist needs to reestablish contact with you in order to get the narcissistic supply that you've proven to be so good at providing. And of course it's a dangerous tactic. I mean, once he gets his foot in the door or she gets her foot in the door, you'll often find yourself being love-bombed and hearing promises of brighter days ahead. But just like poor little Charlie Brown, you're bound to fall again. So with that in mind, let's let's talk about some ways you can deal with a narcissist hoovering. I've got 10 of them for you, all right? How do you deal with being hoovered? Well, if you're still stuck in the relationship, you might just let it happen. I mean, after all, it doesn't suck that much while it's going on, right? But But if you do, you need to put a few safeguards in place. First, don't take the bait, because if you do, you may end up allowing the narcissist to cross your boundaries and you'll end up settling for less than you really deserve. Plus, you don't want to allow yourself to start doing things that you wouldn't normally do and you definitely don't want to stop taking care of yourself in order to take care of the narcissist's needs. That's exactly what they want. And most importantly, you don't want to give up your own independence during this time, especially if you just recently gained it. Okay, But in general, I'm going to give you some guidelines here and this is these are the best ways to cope with hoovering by following these guidelines, okay? So number one, do not let your boundaries be changed or broken during the hoovering phase. It's too easy to give in during this phase, don't do it. Number two, if you've put safeguards or consequences in place due to the narcissist's bad decisions, you need to keep those in place even during hoovering and especially during hoovering, okay? Number three, know that this phase will end and you'll be back to normal status, normal status, with the narcissist at some point. Look at previous patterns for an idea on how long it might last. Make a special effort, this is number four, make a special effort to maintain your healthy activities and relationships and even increase engagement with these healthy situations in order to strengthen your recovery efforts because that's, you know, the narcissist is actually trying to prevent you from recovering from the abuse that you've been subjected to by hoovering you, okay? Number five, 
A lot of times we use hoovering to bargain with our narcissists. This is not productive. You know, we try to create pr positive change in our relationships, whether they're current relationships or their co-parenting relationships or whatever. We try to use these times to create positive change in our relationships. Because during this time, the narcissist seems so receptive, more so than usual anyway, to our requests. And the unfortunate thing is it never lasts. And so you've got to understand that most of the time, any positive change that is created during this time will be short-lived and you're really only setting yourself up for disappointment by engaging yourself with that. Okay? Number six, also keep in mind that as big of a jerk as the person can be, a narcissist is someone who has a personality disorder. Mood swings, rapidly changing ideals, etc. all a big part of that. So there is an actual, you know, I want to say disability there, but I don't know that disability is the right word, but there's a problem. There's a disorder. Okay, so Number seven, remember that knowledge is power. Educate yourself about NPD and make an effort to understand what you're really dealing with because a lot of times understanding leads right to overcoming the issue. Uh, you're already on the right path for that because you're sitting here watching this video right now, so good for you. All right, next up, number eight. Uh, don't allow yourself to depend on the narcissist emotionally, okay? Because we all know they're gonna disappoint you every single time. And this is especially true when it matters the most to you, okay? The hoovering phase can cloud your judgment and might even end up setting your, you know, you could even end up setting yourself up for some real emotional devastation, you know, if you allow your narcissist to lull you into a false sense of security and intimacy. Number nine, if you have been physically abused and the hoovering is an attempt to make you forget it, don't. Get some help instead because quite honestly your life might depend on it my friend so check out the emergency uh, domestic violence page on queenbeing.com or reach out to your local authorities um, you know do something uh, don't waste a minute because you really need to take care of yourself and I'm not joking when I say that your life literally could depend on it okay finally number 10 understand this deal for what it is the narcissist does not love you and I'm sorry to have to break it to you the narcissist just isn't capable of love. It's not your fault. It's the narcissist's fault, okay? In fact, at this point, you've just become a little a pawn in the game that the narcissist is playing. And it's time that you get off the roller coaster, my friend, as soon as you can. Go no contact or low contact if you can. And if you can't, you know, completely cut all contact, well, then at least try the gray rock method to, to minimize the damage, okay? bottom line is that the one thing that you can count on with a narcissist is that they don't change. They might get better at hiding their true selves for a while and they might pretend to change for a while just to get you back, but they certainly don't ever actually change. So in a moment here I'm going to explain to you exactly what I mean by that, alright? Alright, so here's a fact. If you've been involved with a narcissist in any way, which I suspect you have if you're still here watching this video, you probably hoped at one time or another that you could change him or her enough that you could somehow develop a healthier relationship. And that's probably another reason you might be here watching this video, but I just want to clear some things up for you really quick. You know, uh, a while back a reader um, asked me kind of a, a serious question and, and, and it really struck home with me, okay? She said, you know what? My girlfriend has the silent treatment mashed with the pathologically lying mashed with being unemotional mashed with previously uncommitted even though she told me she never cheated on a mate mashed with a bunch of other garbage. Is there any way to get through this crap and be together in the future or am I just kidding myself? I mean seriously hit me with it. I can take it. Does a person like this ever really want to get better? Do they ever take the step of getting help? Or do words really mean crap when it comes to this stuff? She's told me time and time again that she would fix it and get help, but has yet to do anything. How about that? Have you been there? All right. Well, my first thought after I read the question was basically, hmm, well, maybe it's possible for a narcissist to change, but I've never seen it happen, right? But here's the thing. Whether or not it's possible for a narcissist to change might be debatable. Um, the question is whether or not he or she is willing to change, right? And the answer, in my experience, is almost inevitably, hell no, they're not willing to change. They think they're perfect as they are. 
but that's because nine times out of ten, you know, the narcissist does not see a problem with his or her behavior and then blames issues that they do have on everyone around them rather than, I don't know, looking inside for answers, right? Okay, so even so, I'm not the be-all, end-all authority on this. Nobody is, right? I'm just a researcher, a life coach, author, and of course someone who has experienced life with a narcissist on, unfortunately, more than one occasion. Uh, but I decided, you know what, I don't know everything. I'm going to go ahead and do some research so I can get a totally solid answer here, right? So this is where it gets ha hairy, <laughs> as you could probably imagine. Uh, there are various schools of thoughts on this, and there's no one answer, but I'm going to share with you what some experts say about this topic, all right? So let's start with, excuse me, my nose is itchy. Let's start with Craig Macklin, uh, Mal Malkin, I'm sorry, Craig Malkin, PhD, um, and something he said about a narcissist in a... Psychology Today article. Okay, Dr. Malkin says, I'm going to go on record as saying, yes, I do believe it's possible for people to change, even if they've been diagnosed with something as deeply entrenched and formidable as a personality disorder. And, you know, Malkin went on to say that the key to changing is the way you handle your interactions with a narcissist. Now, let me just point out here that this is once again really. Um, you changing and not the narcissist, but I'm going to go ahead and finish telling you what Dr. Malkin says. He says the key to interacting with someone you suspect is a narcissist is to break the vis vicious circle. He says gently thwart their efforts to control, distance, defend, or blame in the relationship by sending the message that you're more than willing to connect with them but not on these terms, to invite them to a version of intimacy where they can be loved and admired warts and all if they only allow the experience to happen. What do you think about that one? Um, I, I, I like Dr. Malkin. I think he's got some great ideas. I don't agree with him on this one. Okay, moving right along. Dr. Lynn, Lynn Namka, who is a psychologist, says that some narcissists can change. She says those with milder forms of the so-called disease. And she says they need to be worried that they could lose, in order to change, they need to be worried that they could lose someone or something they love. Okay. I do think there's something to Dr. Namka's uh, theory here. Some, she says, have to undergo a humbling experience or a great emotional loss before they start to admit their defensiveness and inability to care, uh, you know, for their, to take responsibility for their actions. She says as they grow older, some start to notice their insensitivity when they're dealing with those people around them and some start to feel healthy guilt about their past actions. Guilt, while painful if handled correctly, can be a breakthrough emotion that sets the person on a path to a happier life, she says. She adds that the milder narcissistic defense may soften across life if a person achieves a stable home and work environment or if he or, he or she has a big setback where the rug is pulled out from under them, creating a crack in their defenses. Then again, she says some narcissists will just get worse if they're forced to to their knees after being rejected, failing or otherwise becoming disillusioned and not getting the support they need. Now, I do believe that this is possible if, if, if it's a person who doesn't actually have NPD, someone who just maybe has narcissistic tendencies. Um, and I think in those cases, you're going to be dealing with someone who grew up with a narcissistic parent and who doesn't yet know um, that they grew up in a toxic household and so they're going to behave like their parents. Now as soon as they realize it, a healthy person may choose to change their ways and that's the only time I think that's really going to work for you. But let's move on and, and, and find out what other people say. <laughs> All right, uh, Melanie Tanya Evans, who you, you probably already know, she's a well-known narcissism expert. She says that maybe it's possible but it's highly unlikely. Uh, and like me, Evans says she's actually never seen it happen. Look, me either. I just said it. Um, <laughs> she says, I've never heard of one credible case of a person operating at this level, admitting their inner woundedness and doing the inner work and healing. And she says, I don't for one millisecond believe that cognitive therapy would even touch the edges. Namka, though, Dr. Namka added that people with severe narcissistic traits have limited emotional intelligence and tons of psychological defenses that get in the way of recovery. Ding, ding, ding. I agree. Uh, she says they're unable to see the depth of their pathology and, you know, that they know their shortcomings would send them into great shame, which would trigger depression. Yeah, I can dig that. All right. So 
How about you? Um, what do you think? Have you experienced hoovering before? How did you deal with it? Do you think a narcissist can change? Have you ever seen a narcissist successfully change? I want to talk about this. So if you would, please take a minute and right down there, share your thoughts and your experiences in the comments. You never know who you can help by sharing something that happened to you or something you thought about or something you've been through in this situation. Okay, um, and before I go, also, if you would please hit that subscribe button for me, I'd really appreciate it. I, I always appreciate um, seeing that you're enjoying my videos, and it helps me to see subscriber numbers, so pop it in there. Thank you so much for that, and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day.